All right, this is episode number 18. Now, uh, this was not the one I had planned, but things change. Um, and then we're going to be talking about starting an IV. Now, the reason I'm putting this one together is if you're following uh, the channel with uh, the Haas USMC, you know that he is on his way to Arizona uh, to work along the border. Um, <clears throat> and he sent me this message asking about a vid for uh, IV insertion that he could look at before he goes, so that's what we're going to work on today. Now, Phoenix is in Arizona is near and dear to my heart. I did my emergency medicine residency at Maricopa Medical Center in Phoenix, and I spent a total of about eight years there before moving back to Texas. Uh, so I know this area very well. Um, and I know what's going on. I've got some friends back in Arizona, uh, and I talk to them frequently. I travel there. In fact, we'll be flying there this afternoon. Um, and also in Texas, uh, we're very aware of all the issues with the border. Now, regardless of what you uh, think about with the uh, border issues, whether we need to have very strict control of the border or amnesty, um, you can't escape the fact that it is a very violent place, and the Los Zetas cartel is involved down uh, in the border of Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and California. These people are ruthless and violent and exquisitely well-armed. Um, and in parts of Arizona along the border, it's kind of a no-man's land uh, and can be a dangerous place. Um, I know that there are militia uh, people in Arizona that are exchanging gunfire with uh, Los Zetas. Um, and there's been reports that uh, the cartel is uh, armed with military-style equipment, Humvees and uh, things like that. So to answer the question for the Haas USMC, we're going to talk about starting an IV. And I've asked one of our nurses, Billy, uh, to kind of walk through the process. And we've got a video of uh, him starting an IV with a patient, and he'll take you step by step. Now here's just a very quick picture. Um, the skin is tough uh, on many people, especially if they're young and healthy. And I, and I imagine people that are going to be down at the border of Arizona are not going to be the 90-year-old frail females. Um, so you have to kind of punch through the skin uh, and then get into the vein. One of the common problems that people have when they're first starting IVs is they, uh, number one, don't get everything ready, and number two, kind of get excited and uh, accidentally go through the other side of the vein, um, which can be a problem. So as you're advancing the catheter, if you get resistance, it's not in the right spot. When you advance the catheter, it should go very easy and smooth. So preparation equals success. You got to get everything together. You need to spike your bag and flush the line. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Know where all your connections are. Get the site clean. Get into the vein. Connect everything together. And once you have everything connected together, make sure you secure the line. Uh, nothing's more frustrating than getting into the vein, doing everything right, and then having it pulled out or ripped out uh, right at the last minute. So anyways, let's look at how to put all the lines and bags together, and then we'll get Billy to show how to put the IV in. Hello, this is part of the IV set up. This is will be your tourniquet. Tourniquet. Okay, I've got an OB coming in here. Your cleansing cloth. It's not technically a 54-year-old kid. Just break it here. Took, uh, Xanax. Squeeze, and then we come wet here. Oh, Blood pressure's going down. Uh, and then to you're ready to start, start your IV. Schizophrenia, seven months, cancer treatments. Jared's coming, and I assume he's coming pretty quick. All right, we're, 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 we'll, we'll be done. All right, to, can you see? To open, uh -huh. just pull here. And then when you start your IV from the other video, you'll have your catheter like this. And here, it opens here. This is the shorter tubing, but I think you have the longer tubing. You will spike your bag of fluid here, pulling this off. And using the end here, you will pull the blue thing off and then just insert it there. You will prime your tubing. You'll let all of the, the um, saline go through to the end until it's dripping. Then you can cut it off. 
and then this cap here, twists off, and this will be in the patient's body, and it'll just screw on here. And you'll have it like this, turn it on, and you're ready to go. Okay, so the first thing, the most important thing when you're starting out is make sure you get the tourniquet on well. If you tie it too loosely, then nothing's going to show up. You're not going to feel a vein, you're not going to see a vein, nothing's going to happen. So you want to get pretty tight, but if you do it too tight, then you may bruise your patient. You also may have them start complaining and hollering at you. So, and then the most important thing when you're looking for a vein is to be able to feel it. Because you're going to see lots of things here. I mean, you can see all these veins in a hand right here. But you can't feel any of that very well. And none of that's going to hold an IV worth anything. And those will be useless. So the more important thing is that you can feel a vein. And sometimes you can feel a vein that you can't see. This is obvious both feeling and looking at it. But, you know, there's a couple back here as well that feel pretty good. Um, that don't look nearly as impressive. Um, but they feel alright. But I'd like to get an 18 in her just because, you know, of how sick she is. So. So I tend to try and look for my vein with no gloves on so that I can feel the vein better. And once I've found it, then I'll put my gloves on to actually put the IV in. Um, next step is, of course, cleaning the site. <clears throat> these days, with these things, these freps, you don't really have to do it in the, the concentric circles, but habit rules, so I still do. So... When you, get your, when you get your IV in, you're going to see a flash right in here between the edge of the needle. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But between the edge of the needle and this white, white spot right here. This is all going to fill up with blood. That's how you know that you've gotten inside the vessel. At that point, you're going to stop advancing the whole thing. And you're going to push on this little lip right here and just advance the catheter. And what that's going to do is that's going to push the catheter off of the needle and pull the needle out. You want to make sure as you go in that the bevel is up. I don't know, once again, if you can mm -hmm. see that very well. But you want to make sure the bevel is up as you're going as you're going in if you go down and that you know you may not get a flash and things like that it may cause you some problem so always bevel up and after you get your flash here then you stop advancing the whole thing and just advance the catheter after that and once you've cleaned your side of course don't touch it anymore um, one thing that I tend to do is you want your <clears throat> your catheter to end up right in the biggest part of that vein so like right there so what I would do is I would start my insertion back here lay just kind of don't actually touch the skin but lay it above it here and look where the hub is and then kind of come down near that and that's where I'm going to start inserting so you're going to go in at a very flat angle the steeper the angle the more likely you're going to go all the way through the vein and come out the other side and wind up having to do this again so we're going to go at a very flat angle just go in quickly don't go slowly, you can see the flash right here. So I'm in the vessel, so I'm no longer, no longer advancing the whole thing. Now we're just gonna advance the catheter with this little lip right here. So we're just gonna advance the catheter slowly, okay? And then pull that back till it clicks. You wanna make sure you hear the click. <clears throat> Otherwise the needle is not locked and you can still wind up stabbing yourself in the finger or something with a contaminated needle. So a lot of pressure out here. This catheter is one inch long. So go one inch out from the hub, and you can feel the end of that catheter in the vessel almost always. And so you're going to press, put some good pressure there, and you're going to occlude the end of that, that um, catheter to pull this out. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of bleeding from the hub. Now, something else you can do is put some 4x4 um, some four four gauze pads or something like that underneath the hub here so that if it does bleed, you're keeping from making a mess all over the place, or a towel, or whatever you have handy. So most of the time, because this is in the ER, this... Um, this heplock is not actually flushed uh, anywhere else it probably would be but because we tend to draw blood as we get the IV site uh, started then we don't have it flushed yet okay but most other places this would have already been flushed and so I would just flush it again to make sure that my IV is good and then we'd be done if your IV is not good if it's if your catheters come through the other side of the vessel or for whatever reason maybe you've gone along the top of it but you're not actually in the vein anymore when you flush, you're going to get a big bleb right here. You're going to get, it's going to be obviously infiltrated. It's going to swell. It's going to make a big bubble right there. So, but because I'm drawing blood, I'm just going to break this catheter or this cap loose on the top of the pep lock there until it fills up with blood and then you tighten it up again. And I need a 10 cc syringe. Oh, are you drawing blood over there? Oh, you're just getting blood cultures, aren't you? Here, I'll just use a 20. I want to I'm just going to draw some blood here. 
got to be careful when you're drawing blood. Don't pull any faster than the, than the vein's going to let you. You try to pull too fast and you're going to hemolyze the blood, uh, which means that you break up the cells inside the blood and that's going to cause um, a lot of your tests, specifically potassium, to be um, falsely elevated or, or affected somehow. Yeah, I'm getting one set over here, Jacob. So you just want to pull as fast as it lets you. If you it, your bubble there in the syringe, you notice the amount of air next to the plunger should stay about the same. If you're pulling too fast, your bubble's going to be getting bigger and bigger, and then you're most likely hemolyzing your specimen, and it's going to be no good to you anyways. Okay, so once you've gotten your blood drawn, loosen the, or release the tourniquet. If you're not drawing blood, then release the tourniquet as soon as you get the heplot connected, or even before would be better. Less likely to bleed all over the place if you take that tourniquet off. Okay, next important thing is to make sure you get this blood into tubes quickly before it clots. Can you go ahead and do that for me? Check it. So next you're going to get the blood into the tubes. Um, Make sure it doesn't clot and then get, you know, get it to wherever you're going to get the testing done. And then you're going to flush this. And this is where you're going to find out if your, if your IV is, is um, infiltrated or if it's not in the, in the vein. So no changes here. We're not seeing any swelling. So this is good. This IV will work. So then just make sure you clamp it off. I like to continue pushing pressure as I clamp. It gives you a little back pressure. keeps you from having any, uh, any blood back up into the tubing. Because of course, if, if that happens and you let it go too long without flushing it, then your IV is going to be clotted and probably no good anymore. You'll probably have to pull it out and try somewhere else. And just get it taped down wherever's comfortable for the patient. This patient's intubated, so she's probably not too concerned. But in general, make sure that you're comfortable for the patient, but it's also accessible for you if you need to, you know, access it to push any drugs or to any drip or any of that sort of stuff. And that's it. Anything I missed? Thank <laughs> you.